What's up, guys? It's Casey Zogelman, a.k.a. The Fourth Sanderson Sister, coming at you with another Hocus Pocus 2 video. In today's video, I'm addressing the elephant in the room about why several of us were disappointed with the long-awaited sequel to Hocus Pocus. A lot of people have expressed to me that they weren't super thrilled with how it turned out. Um, the internet as a whole is kind of mixed. A lot of us liked it. A lot of us didn't like it. A lot of people said it was fun, but they were still a little disappointed. So I'm going to talk about why I think people as a collective, people as a collective, not as individuals, um, were disappointed with this movie. Um, this is a threefold answer. Um, I'm not doing this to be malicious or to devalue someone else's opinion. I'm just hoping I might be able to clarify the why of all of this. Um, and I also can't take full credit for all of this explanation as my little brother. Okay, he's not so little anymore, but you get it. Um, he hit the nail on the head with his statement, so I'm going to talk about that too. Um, so yeah, let's, let's talk about this because I think it does need to be talked about. Uh, at the end of the day, this is going to come down to personal opinion, but I think people as a whole might not understand why they were disappointed, and I think I might be able to shed some light on that. So several of you have expressed to me your disappointment in Hocus Pocus 2. First off, let's just look at this thing of the standpoint of Hocus Pocus 1 versus Hocus Pocus 2, the then and the now, the then versus the now. The first movie came out 29 years ago in 1993 when people weren't as easily offended by, well, to be frank, everything. Absolutely everything. Hocus Pocus uh, 1 started with murdering Emily Banks and hanging three witches on screen. Welcome to 2022 where that kind of stuff isn't okay anymore. There were a few people who have expressed that Sarah felt off. She felt a little not Sarah in Hocus Pocus 2. Well, that's because half of her personality in Hocus Pocus 1, I'm sorry children for using this word, but it's the only word that I could come up with, half of her personality in Hocus Pocus 1 was built on being horny all the time. Welcome to 2022 where those jokes aren't okay anymore. Welcome to 2022 where half of the stuff they could get away with in the first movie isn't okay anymore. That's a huge contributing factor as to why things felt weird or different or some characters felt off. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Um, I'm glad we've made the progress that we've made. But I think it explains a lot of the differences is because the first one came out in the 90s when kids' movies were a heck of a lot darker. And nowadays we have stuff like um, Frozen and Despicable Me. <laughs> so, times change, folks. <laughs> And that really reflected in this, uh, in, in that aspect. And several of you have also said, again, going back to the whole timing thing, this should have happened 10 years ago. Hey, guys, Bet tried. She tried a lot. She tried every single year. And Disney kept saying, no, we're not interested. She tried and tried. And Disney kept saying no, because the first one was a box office bomb due to their own stupidity, which I made an entire video on that fiasco, which you can watch by clicking on this thing right here. So you can blame Disney for this not coming out any sooner than it did. And not anyone else, because Bet tried. She tried. She tried very hard. So another thing people have uh, expressed ill feelings towards was the story. People were annoyed that the story didn't revolve around the Sanderson sisters hunting kids because that's their whole thing. Well, if they did the exact same thing again, would you not be upset that it's copy-paste job? Would you not have accused the writers of being lazy and uncreative? Don't lie to yourselves. You know you would. I like that they pursued a different course of action. I was happy to see new magic and new plans not revolving around the life potion. But, that said, it did feel kind of choppy at times instead of cohesive. This is where I must credit my little brother as he made this observation, not me. It's like the Minions movies. Hocus Pocus 2's plot was built around bits 
the bits were not built around the plot. If we were to break it down, it would feel like a bunch of Sanderson sisters sketches with a loose storyline pinning them together. We got a sketch in Walgreens. We got a sketch at the Scarefest. We had a sketch in the mayor's house. We even had a sketch in the forest when they came back. There were a lot of boxes for the Sanderson sisters to check, and they checked all of them, confused by modern day technology, not understanding pop culture, participating in meta humor, new brooms, and singing. It was still extremely enjoyable and so much fun to watch, but there were moments where it felt like they were going down a checklist of things they needed to do for this movie. Does that make sense? I really love this movie, and it makes me extremely happy every time I watch it, so honestly, this didn't disappoint me, because I like the Minions movies, where it's a bunch of bits built around a loose plot. I like uh, fun stuff like that. I think it's really entertaining to watch. If I want something that's going to, like, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. Um, <laughs> if I want something that's, like, a really serious story, I'm probably gonna watch a drama. With comedies, I'm not as nitpicky about that kind of stuff. I appreciate that they did have a storyline holding all this together, and I did like this storyline, but it was built around bits and not bits built around a plot. That's just a huge difference between the first and second movie. The first movie, they set out to tell a spooky, funny story. This time around, they were doing the same, but they very clearly knew they were there to have fun. Like, this was a much more lighthearted, fun thing. Well, of course, up until the end when, you know, ow. Magica and Maxima, Confessio, rescind the spell. <laughs> but, um, that's, that's the thing, is it's just, it's bits over plot. But they were fun bits, and I will watch it over and over and over again. I love this movie so much. But again, I like stuff like that. It doesn't bother me that much. Like, I like bits. I enjoy sketches. And this, to me, it was a really good movie. But I can recognize it's a plot built around bits, and not bits built around a plot. You know? Now, the last thing, and I think, frankly, this is the most important thing that I'm going to address as to why I think people were disappointed in the movie was the absolute spectacle that was the entire year leading up to this movie. The internet went nuts the day Kathy, Bette, and Sarah Jessica sent out those famous tweets of their return that I have used for news updates over the last year. We were glued to our computer and phone screens from that moment on because we knew this was actually happening. We'd been taunted and teased for years with rumors and rumblings of a sequel, the most famous being Rise of the Elder Witch that I even fell for years ago. I, I even posted a Facebook status about that. I popped up in my memories recently and I was like, hey, that's the thing that bamboozled me. And, it's and it finally was happening. We were finally getting our sequel. We all started building up our expectations and thinking about what the story's going to be. We'd watch for the next update with bated breaths. Anytime a new photo of one of the Sanderson sisters hiding from cameras behind umbrellas hit the internet, we lost our freaking minds. When the first full photo of the Sanderson sisters dropped in November of last year, we went crazy. I went cr so crazy from being happy and dancing that I got overconfident in my abilities and my reflexes that I tried to save a falling glass from our cabinet uh, while I was putting dishes away, and I cut my hand open when it shattered on the floor. Yes, friends, I now have a scar right here to remind me of the day the Sanderson sisters returned to us forevermore. It is literally scarred into my body. Hocus Pocus Guide then came on the scene, and I started covering news and doing theories on this channel. 
We were really hyped up for that first teaser trailer. The world was going mad with Sanderson Love and it was beautiful. But here's the thing we completely forgot to do during all of this mania. And that was keep ourselves grounded in the reality that this was not going to be the same as Hocus Pocus 1. I think people had more fun anticipating, hyping up, and getting pumped for the new movie that when we got the movie, people were a little bummed out. <laughs> Not because the movie was bad, because it wasn't, but because we got overhyped. We went too hard, too fast, and we forgot to cool our jets before coming in for a landing. A lot of people set their expectations way up here, sky high, for this much-anticipated sequel. Meanwhile, I was physically reminding myself constantly to not do that. Because if you set expectations too high for something, often you'll be disappointed. Tell me I'm wrong. Some of you will argue that telling people to lower their expectations is a poor argument, but is it I look at things very pessimistically in my life, and honestly, it's been an advantage because I'm almost always pleasantly surprised instead of being disappointed that something didn't meet every single one of my expectations. Like, Hocus Pocus is my favorite thing in the entire media world, so I was so excited for the sequel, but I was also terrified. I was scared spitless that this was actually happening. And I think that terror helped keep me at a level that made sure I was prepared for Hocus Pocus 2 to not necessarily be as good as Hocus Pocus 1. And you know what happened? Do you know what happened? When I watched Hocus Pocus 2 for the first time, I had the best time I have ever had watching a movie since I watched the first one at four years old. I had so much fun watching this movie. I enjoyed everything I saw, with the exception of Mike, who I cannot stand, and I got so emotional at the end because I got to see my girls sent off with some redemption and dignity. These three characters that I love more than life itself and quite a few people, real people, finally got what I had always dreamed they would get. Some redemption and some dignity. And oh my god, I was so happy. I love Hocus Pocus 2. It delivered what I expected, a fun ride that made me happy and surprised me and made me emotional and revived the little girl who fell in love with the Sanderson sisters all those years ago. But I understand the point of view of people who were disappointed but maybe they couldn't quite put their finger on why, and I'm hoping that this video and my reasoning helps just a little. Try... Okay, if you've only watched it once, and you don't want to do it again because you were disappointed, take my word for it. Try giving it another chance, because my close friends who told me they were disappointed in the movie, they watched it for a second time, and they enjoyed the heck out of it. They loved it after that second watch through. So just give it another shot. Give it another shot. I really think all those things that I just listed off, especially the overhyping, is what maybe we all kind of felt like we were on a sugar crash, you know? It was like we'd spent a year doing all of this stuff for Hocus Pocus 2, and now it's here. And it's over. We're done. We have it. Now what? It's like Christmas Eve. You get so excited for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day because you're going to get all these presents and you open them up and then it's done. Then it's done. Like, I think that's, that was the, I fed into the hype, obviously, because of this channel, but I think that was also the danger of the hype. Because when we finally got the thing, it was like, oh, well, now what? <laughs> so, there you have it. That's my take on why I think people as a whole 
We're disappointed in Hocus Pocus 2. Again, at the end of the day, it does just come down to personal taste. But I wanted to address some of the like most popular complaints and why I think people felt that way. If you were confused as to why you didn't enjoy it as much, honestly, I hope this video helped. And just know, I love this movie, and I'll be bringing you more content on Hocus Pocus 2. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't. It's free, it helps me, and what helps me helps you guys get more great content like this. So, next Monday is Halloween night, which also happens to follow my regular upload day. So I have done a poll on whether you guys wanted a... Q&A session that I would record and post on Halloween, or if you wanted a live stream watch along of Hocus Pocus 2, and by a sizable margin, I'll be doing a live stream watch along of Hocus Pocus 2 with you all. That said, we had to determine if we were doing it on Halloween, or if we were doing it on October 30th, because on Halloween, I have to work late. I have to work till at least 7.30, and I wouldn't get home till 8, and then I'd still need to eat dinner, which put me at 8.30, so it'd be a really late stream. <laughs> um, and this one's longer than the first movie. <laughs> so uh, I put up another poll. We're going to be doing the live stream watch-along of Hocus Pocus 2 on October 30th at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Same time as last time. We're going to be doing it at 7.30 p.m. CST. So please drop by. I will probably still be dressed up because I'll be working a trunk or treat earlier at my church. So I'll still be dressed up as one of the Sanderson sisters, but you won't know which one until you turn on your camera, just like last time. Um, so you guys will not want to miss out. We're going to do another fun watch along. We're going to have fun in the chat like we did before. Um... I won't be sharing my screen because of copyright, so we'll do like we did for Hocus Pocus 1 watch along. We're gonna, you have it pulled up at your house, I'll have it pulled up on my screen, and we press play together. Also, please remember to join our Discord, the Sanderson Cottage. Link is in our About section. I finally got it to where it should be set to never expire. Um, and share, and, uh, just share your love of Hocus Pocus in there. It's a lot of fun. Um, we have fun over there. I got some great mods who are keeping the eye on everything. We, we're squashing the drama. If there's drama, we squash it. Um, if you're a regular on this channel, please remember to drop a like and share your thoughts on this topic down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Casey Zogelman, a.k.a. the fourth Sanderson sister, and I will see you witches and wizards later. I am